By the end of today's session, you should be able to know how to balance off accounts and so we are going to get started right now. So for quite some time now, I've been talking about debit this, credit this, open this account and all these things. Now we all know that we are going to continue doing this double entry for a period of time, let's say a year. Of course, the accounting period is normally a year. And so it is expected that at the end of the year, I, after doing a lot of debit this, credit this, debit this, credit this, you're supposed to make sense out of this. Uh, so what happens is that at the end of the year, uh, the various accounts that you have created are summarized and uh, they are analyzed. Yes, much as we have been post posting all these figures on the debit side and the credit side of these respective accounts, what do these figures mean? What do these figures represent? Balancing off essentially is going to help us know the kind of picture these accounts represent. Finding the balance of these accounts is normally done at the end of the year. But depending on the need and depending on the, on the nature of the business, sometimes it can be done at the end of every month. So to illustrate this, I'm going to use a debtor's account. So let's look at the debtor's account. Now, we all know that a debtor in a business is somebody who, whom you supplied goods and they, they are supposed to pay you later on. That's a debtor. And so as far as double entry goes, if somebody owes the business money, that person is a debtor to the business and in the books, in the business's books, that person is always debited. So if I may use an illustration, a graphic illustration, uh, Let's say we have a debtor's account right there, like you're writing on the screen. This person probably came to the premises and they were able to get some goods from the business, but they promised to pay later, so this becomes debtors. So it means that uh, you debit their account. Let's say this person got goods from the business, goods worth 12 million. So what happens is that we are going to debit the debtor's account with 12 million, of course, because uh, by of course when they come for goods, you've made sales. So the other item that has been affected is the sales account. Let's post another transaction there. Maybe this same person comes back and picks more goods, maybe worth 1 million shillings. So again, we shall repeat the same process. Go ahead and debit the, one, uh, the debtor's account with 1 million. And of course, the other item affected is sales. Of course, the trading period is ongoing and the, this person owes the business money so along the way this person comes and pays money so when this person comes and pays money it means that the debtor's account in your books is going to reduce because this person has paid the money that uh, that you expected from them so when you look at our debit side our debit side is if you add it up it is um, 13 million so let's say you go ahead and uh, receive that cash so when you receive that cash, because the data is now clearing the debt, so it means you're going to go ahead and credit the debtor's account with the 13 million that has been paid. Of course, if the money that has been paid is in form of cash, it means the other item that has been affected is cash. So you make put cash right there. And of course, whatever debt is put there. So you realize that when you look at this account on the debit side and the credit side, when you add up those two, they are the same. Now the kind of picture that account is representing is this. It is representing a picture that says, or it is telling a story, that this particular data owed the business 13 million shillings. And at a certain time T, this person came back and paid that money. So what we are supposed to do here is that at the end of the trading period, we are supposed to close off this account. Or sometimes we can say we, we can say balance off the account. And the process of balancing off the account is essentially adding the total of the debit side and the total of the credit side. So that's it. We have balanced off that account. Now, of course, uh, take note that the totals are supposed to be on the same line always so take note of that now in the event that the account that you're dealing with just has one transaction and maybe it's just one transaction that happened during the course of the year 
you don't need to go ahead and do these totals you just need to double underline the figure and you have balanced off the account again like i said the picture that you just saw was this one a picture of a certain data that owed the business money and the amount of money we used in this illustration was 13 million and this data went ahead and paid all the money by the end of the trading period and the account was balanced off but let's face it in the real world this happens rarely in most cases by the time the trading period is done a lot of debtors have not yet paid so it means that in most cases you'll find that the debit side will always be bigger than the credit side or oh, what i'm trying to say here by the end of the trading period most of the ledger accounts the t accounts will have different balances on the debit and credit side so when this happens how do we balance off this account let's look at this graphically take a look at your screen look at this account that is right there let's call uh, i've drawn up an account here we've called it uh, this data data event and uh, on the debit side uh, we are putting there some random dates right there 2016 August um, the, there's 158,000 there and that was a sale on August 3rd 206,000 that was also a sale on August 4th uh, 118,000 that was also a sale and then the other side on the debit side we have 158,000 and the other item that was affected was bank that happened on 23rd of August now we have just drawn a random account and we need to uh, analyze this account uh, it's the end of the period and we need to balance it off so what happens here is that in accounting first of all we only enter figures as totals if both sides of the account agree however in this case as you already realize the totals on the debit side and the totals on the credit side are not the same so it means we cannot go ahead and you know do the totals uh for the the, the debit side is 482000 and the credit side is 158000 as far as totals go so we need to first make them to agree we need to first make them agree because in accounting we only write totals when the both both of the sides agree so in order to make them agree we are supposed to find which one is bigger than the other and in so doing using our illustration above we are going to subtract the debit side is 482000 so it is bigger than the credit side which is 158000 so we shall go ahead and subtract 400 subtract we shall say 482000 minus 158000 and when we subtract the two our answer is 324000 so if our answer is 324,000, it means that the debit side is bigger. And of course, the interpretation of this is that uh, this data event still owes the business 324,000. That is the interpretation of that. So we need to balance off the account showing that event owes us 324,000. Now, I'm using the term um, balance off, but I, I can either say balance off an account or close off the account. These two terms, I'll be using them interchangeably. They both mean the same thing. So how do we balance off this account? What we do here, like I had already earlier said, is that we first add up the both sides. Now, adding up both sides is what we did earlier. And when we did this, we were able to find that the debit side has 482,000 and the credit side has 158,000. After adding up the two sides, deduct the smaller total from the larger one. We already did that with the other account when we said 482,000 minus 158,000. And we were able to get a total of 324,000. Now, after getting the total, the, the difference between the two sides, we then enter the balance with the side with the smaller total. In this case, 
the side with the smaller total is the credit side and so it means that we are going to put the difference which so happens to be 324,000 onto the side with the smaller total and of course after putting the side there the, you realize that the totals are going to be the same when we so when the totals are the same it means now we can go ahead and put our totals so we shall go ahead and um put the totals on both sides on the debit side and on the credit side and then we shall afterwards we double underline after the totals so after entering the totals we shall go ahead and get the balance from the credit side that is from the smaller side and we shall go ahead and post that balance on the next line below the totals on the bigger side in this case the debit side now take note since we are balancing off at the end of the trading period it means that the debt that we are going to put above the total like you're seeing on your screen that debt is normally the debt of the the last date of the trading period in most times if let's say your trading period is running from 1st january to 31st december you are expected to balance off your books on the last day of the trading period and it means that uh ideally the date will be 31st december whatever year so that kind of date on the of the last day is written above the totals below the totals we shall go ahead and post the next day that is the date immediately after the previous one remember the previous day is the, the date the 31st of december is the last day of the trading period it means the next date that is on 1st of january will be the first date of the trading period the next trading period so in most cases uh, below the totals we normally put a date that will be the next day immediately after the last day of the previous period now the balance that is above the totals is what we call the balance carried down the balance below the totals is what we call the balance brought down so in other words the balance brought down is actually the balance that we are starting with in the next trading period from the simple illustration we were able to see that the debit balance or the debit side was bigger than the credit side when you are trying to balance off an account and the debit side is bigger than the credit side this kind of balance is what we call the debit balance the reverse is true in case you are trying to balance off an account and the credit side is bigger than the debit side then we call it a credit balance now after balancing off all these accounts in the ledgers what happens is that we transfer those balances to what we call the trial balance the reason as to why we transfer these balances to the trial balance is so that we are able to see whether the debits or the debit balances are equivalent to the credit balances now if your double entry has been correct the debit balances and the credit balances are supposed to be the same the trial balance more like more or less is more like an arithmetic check it helps in ensuring arithmetic accuracy of the double entry system we shall discuss the trial balance in a later session the purpose of this session was simply to show how to balance ledger accounts like this video if you like it be sure to subscribe if you've not yet subscribed check out other awesome accounting lectures on the channel my name is Anold Ranga Kuramia and this is Kisembo Academy